about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. All right, well, Rick Ross is facing some allegations for five of his Wingstop locations, and that is for violations from the Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division. As reported by TMZ, they're saying that they have collected $114,000 in back wages, liquidated damage, and civil penalties from five stores. All of them are operated by Boss Wing Enterprises. Now, it says the stores made their employees illegally pay for uniforms, safety training, background checks, and even cash register shortages. In addition, they say that in, they're in violation of child labor regulations as they found a 15-year-old illegally working past 10 p.m. last summer. Was well, 15-year-olds can't work past 10 p.m.? No, not in certain places. Oh. Uh. Not in certain places. Yeah, so. But, I mean, it's, it's two sides that, of the coin. I wonder if, if that 15-year-old was, if it was five <clears> minutes <throat> after and they were cleaning up and, you know, you just wonder what it is, you know? And also, things like this happen in business all, all the, time, the time, especially yeah. when you're a franchise owner. But since it's Rick Ross, it's magnified. Yeah. That's all Absolutely. Absolutely. But not only that, I mean, people do know Rick Ross is not going to every wing stop checking on mm-hmm. his employees. He has people that he has. He has managers. His companies. He has yeah. managers, general managers. If something like that happens, and you know, fix it and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. All right, now football player Manti Teo. He learned in 2012 that his online girlfriend was uh, not the person that she claimed to be, and she he is now speaking out about I the situation. Forgot about it. Remember that, mm-hmm. right? It's a two-part Netflix documentary called "Untold: The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist," and he's giving his side of the story. And he was on CBS this morning. He was uh, talking about why he's telling the story and how he was influenced because of Jay Z. Um, Cam Jordan with the Saints. He took a bunch of us teammates to a Jay Z concert, mm-hmm. and at that concert, Jay Z opens up with saying these words. He said, "You cannot heal what you don't reveal." Mm. And it, it may have been just some random words to everybody, but for me at that time, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In order for me to, to kind of heal from this, I need, it, I need to reveal it. And mm-hmm. so I, I challenged myself at that time that if anybody asked about it or had questions about it, that I would be open. I would have those hard conversations. And I started to, to feel the strength that I would get from talking about it. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, I started to realize the love and the support and the empathy right. from the people that I was sharing it with. I, so I don't remember filming. And he had a girlfriend that he never met. He yeah, got, he was catfished, yeah, catfish. and he he talked he talked about that too. He talked about how he did make attempts to meet up with this woman. So you're talking to somebody online, and you, you think it's a woman, and you're talking yes. to her, and you, you there's a picture of her. She's very attractive. Clearly, you both seem to develop feelings for each other. How could you have a relationship? Call somebody your girlfriend, and you never met her right. for three years. There were there were attempts to meet up right but then anytime it would come up there there are plane tickets being sent um there are excuses of oh a family member is ill well yeah. for me i'm not going to be like well prove it you know it's just right. like right okay, i understand you mm-hmm. know what i mean i hope everything goes well let me know we'll, we'll try again later and so that's kind of, that's kind of how it all went throughout the and sometimes process. You're, you're blind to things um, that you aren't necessarily blind to because love is getting in the way mm-hmm. mm. Yeah, I remember that. He yeah, was if a, you guys recall, yeah, people said he was in on it. They didn't believe him. They thought that he knew. And here's what he had to say about dealing with people who were critical of him. You find a lot about yourself when when the, the narrative is now negative. Mm. You, know, you, you really find out how much do I really weigh people's opinions of me. I didn't mm. realize how much I really cared about people's opinions because prior to that, it was all positive. It's, it's all good when it's praise. Yes, when yes. it's all praise and it's yeah. congratulations, That's it's like, That's man. Good. This is great, like I'm fine, but then it turns negative. That's real. And then you're like, okay, who am I? Yeah. Who, who am I before the praise? Who am I be, you know, before all the criticism? Hmm. And so there's a lot of self-discovery there. And I think it was a whole process in, in itself for me to find out, okay, who is Manti? I wonder if he was sending money and things like that as well, like sending Christmas gifts, birthday gifts. I wonder how deep it went. I just always wondered how cosmetically challenged were the women at Notre Dame that he was out here getting catfished. The women on that campus must have been horrendous for him not to have been paying them no attention. No, he just found a connection right, well, with somebody online. That's all. With all of that, all of those women on campus, he found he was a star con- football player. He found a connection. They probably had great conversation, and it was he was comfortable. What are you with saying? It. He bought him a drink, and then he thought and that she died. <laughs> what? You know, and he 
He thought that she had died in a car accident, but they were unable to locate records of Kakua's death. That's the woman he thought he was talking to. Here's nah, what he said about now. that. Your grandmother died. Yes. And then it was reported that your girlfriend died, and right. everybody thought such great sympathy for this guy. He loses two of the most important people in his life. Then it's revealed that this girlfriend never existed. Mm -hmm. And that's what people That was a like. bombshell. That was yes. a bombshell. And then they thought, well, you had to have been in on it. You had to have known that this person didn't exist and maybe you were just trying to get sympathy. Whether it was a catfishing or it was real, I mourned both yes. the same day. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it turns out this the, this woman was actually a man pretending to be a woman. <gasps> yes. And now, to complicate it further, this, this man is now a transgender woman, but at the time, <gasps> she was a man pretending to be a woman. Yes. But you were never in on it, right, Manti? No, I was not. Yeah, I never got the impression that you were in on it. No. Her name was Kakua. How cuckoo are you that you believe there was a person named Kakua? Kakua? What kind of name is Kakua? Do you know any Kakuas? Well, I, see, that's why he didn't want to not. speak out about it. But I'm glad he did, though, because I'm sure there's a lot of people like that, like he said. Now, was this before the Catfish TV show or after? I don't remember. Before. Was it before? Yes. I don't remember. Well, it was like 10 years ago, I felt like. Did he ever really find, that's what I want to know. Did he ever find love in real life? Did he ever find somebody to, you know, love on? Yeah, he actually has a kid now, and... I believe he's married to a real child. Stop it! <laughs> no, I'm asking. Yes. I'm serious. Okay. Well, congratulations. Yeah, he is. He's married with one daughter, and he has a son on the way. Okay, congratulations. Cause he got, he got drafted and everything. I think he got drafted by the Chargers or something. Did he play in the league? He did. Okay. So he had a good life. Sure. All right. Well, maybe now you want to watch Untold, the girlfriend who didn't exist. Yeah, not really. But <laughs> salute to him. What's his name? All right. Well, that that is your rumor report. Man, I tell you. Salute to Man, I tell you. Now, let me ask you a question. No, right? don't ask me no questions. <laughs> you don't want to hear what I have to say? No, I don't. I mean, you can you can say it. Don't ask me. After now listen. you connect for three years, right? Connect what? Y'all vibing with each other. Y'all speaking on the phone or whatever y'all doing, texting or whatever it may be. Y'all vibing. This is your girl. You find out that it's not a uh, it's a trans person. Mm -hmm. Do you still stay connected because y'all still have that connection? Y'all had the emotional connection. That's right. a great question. You know what I mean? It's a crying still... game. You ever see the crying game? Mm -mm. No. That's a great question. So, I mean, so because it's still connected, y'all emotionally connected. You love this person. Maybe it's and like you the... say it's, it's the heart. It's not the actual person. Well, maybe it's like striking vipers. You ever seen that Black Mirror episode, striking vipers? No. They tried to meet each other and have a connection, but then they realized they weren't really gay. They just like to play gay on video games. Can you relate? I've never seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you giving your donkey to, man? <laughs> Boy, after the hour, uh, I'm giving donkey today to Pastor Carlton Funderburk. He needs to come to the front of the congregation. We were just talking about not having any expectations. He has too many. We shall discuss. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.